throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, Dear James, and together with the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we look at the current energies, the intuitive wisdom and insights, and we go as guided. And as we begin Season 4 of Weekly Wisdom and Insights, we do so with tremendously large, huge energies at play that are going to carry us uh, for many, many a moons. Welcome, Alicia. Um, and, and why? Welcome, Olivia. And why? Because Pluto has just officially entered, as of yesterday, the 19th of November, it has officially entered the sign of Aquarius. We have been talking about this for a good year plus, um, and it is officially here. Um, and so I want to jump in because there is so much, I don't know about all of you, but there is so much happening. And that is one of the main themes here, how life is going to speed up. Communication is going to speed up. Um, the things that we receive, we experience are going to speed up. You get the, you get the uh, idea. <laughs> so let's jump right in and we're going to, and bear with me as we interweave all of this inter interconnected um, interconnectedness, these themes. So quickly with the main energies, um, we want to focus primarily on the 12, the 21, and the 3. Hexagram 12, the energy standstill, release. And you're going to see how that plays with number 3, and I just realized it in the moment. <laughs> and 21, we biting through, discern, using our discernment. And then number 3, Difficult beginnings, persevere. Why? And Olivia saying, I just got chills when you said when you said about Pluto, and I said, yes, it's exactly there's mega energies. So when we look at the astrological influences, and we're really focusing on the Mars Pluto opposition, how Saturn station direct, it's now going forward um, in Pisces, the full supermoon, this last. Uh, full moon was a super moon, and it was the fourth super moon in a row that occurred on the 15th, that was last Friday, in Taurus. And then we have Pluto enters Aquarius, mega, huge, big. And as is the Mars Pluto opposition, it's playing out again until the end of April. Saturn going direct, it's, it's now time, things are moving forward. And then on the 21st, tomorrow, the sun enters Sagittarius and immediately sextiles Pluto. And a sextile is a positive aspect. The overall theme for the astrological influence is accelerated expansion. Cannot understate that statement. Accelerated expansion. The main theme, and I'm just going to jump to it very quickly because it's so incredible, is Rise of the Guardians. The Age of Aquarius, Peacock Medicine. So we're going to interweave Rise of the Guardians, Peacock Medicine, and the Age of Aquarius. And we have this beautiful image of the peacock with the star shining from above and so forth. So we will see how this all plays together. I want to quickly go back to August, the show on August 21st. The title of that show was A Cosmic Reset. The Unseen Speaks. And in that, the first thing they said was tipping the scales of democracy, liberty, freedom, dot, 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 forward. And so again, bear in mind, I'm very, I'm, I'm with you, I'm all with you, what the world looks like, what things appear to be, may drastically change. And so we're going back just to replay this because this is also where number four from that show was Mr. Sandman. And it was about Rise of the Guardians and Legends Unite. And we have this beautiful image of Rise of the Guardians, the Age of Aquarius, Peacock Medicine, 
with the image that we used back in that show, which was Legends Unite and about guardianship. And so that was from then. And then last but not least from that show was As Above, So Below. So bear in mind that these and this show was right before the Democratic National Convention. I believe in Milwaukee. I'm not sure. I have to remember. Chicago. Pardon me. Chicago. Um, so Rise of the Guardians they, and Legends Unite. And just so you understand, so Rise of the Guardians, it's a DreamWorks animation movie from 2012. And the plot is that Jack Frost emerges from a frozen pond with amnesia and finds himself invisible to the mortal realm. Three centuries later, the man in the moon alerts Nicholas St. North um, of the resurgence of Pitch Black, the boogeyman, who threatens to unleash nightmares upon children. North rallies his fellow guardians, the Easter Bunny, the Sand Sandman, and the Tooth Fairy. And they, dis uh, they discover that Jack, Jack Frost, has been chosen to join their ranks, to be a guardian. Transported to the North Pole, Jack is told by North that every guardian has a center, which is something they foster in children. Jack knows nothing of his center and resists the call to become a guardian. Long story short, there's all this back and forth where Pitch Black, the boogeyman, is extinguishing all of the light, all of the faith and the hope and the belief in the world, in Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny and all of these all of these things that as children we grow up with, which denotes hope and optimism and faith. Long story short, due to pitch black, every child in the world has stopped believing except for one, Jamie, drastically weakening the guardians. Finding Jamie's belief wavering Jack makes it snow in his room, causing Jamie to be the first person to believe in Jack Frost to see him. Jack realizes that his center is fun and uses it to gather Jamie's friends, play, and diminish their fear, leading to renewed belief that bolsters the Guardians and resurrects Sandman, because Pitch had killed Sandman, which of course is about dreams. Sandman, I'm going to bring this back, is the oldest guardian and the deliverer of dreams. So here we have this moment of where dreams are being killed, lights are being extinguished all around the globe, and through Jack Frost and Jamie, because he was the one child that refused to give up hope. And so as they faced, so the children's, as they face uh, pitch, the children's dreams prove stronger than the nightmares, who then turn on Pitch Black, the boogeyman, and drag him into the underworld. Jack finally accepts his place as the guardian of fun. There's a moment in the film where all of the children and the guardians, and they're beaten down, they're, they're literally just hanging on by a thread. And nightmares and Pitch Black, and they're bearing down on all of them. And Jamie looks at him and says, it's not that you don't exist. It's just that I don't, I don't believe in you. I don't place my faith or my trust or my hope in you. And that's when they drag Pitch Black, the nightmares in Pitch Black, and he gets dragged to the underworld. So this rise of the guardians, Pluto enter, enters Aquarius. Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, we the people. And where our hopes and dreams and wishes thrive. They come into the fullness of light. And so it is about this. I understand what the world looks like in this given moment. I understand. However, we have a choice. Do we buy in to the boogeyman? Do we buy in to the, to the darkness, to the nightmares? Or like the children with the guardians, peacock medicine, do we rise to the occasion? Pluto and Aquarius, do we rise to the moment when everything is bearing down on us? Do we rise to the occasion? 
So let's move into these two astrological charts because they are the ones that are playing a major role. And so this is the Taurus full moon astrology chart. And remember, this is the chart in the center. It has the five pointed star, which is the star, the flower and the star of Venus. It's the pentagram. Contained within the pentagram is the pentagon. It is the oldest symbol on earth and it represents the divine feminine. It, it dates back to about 4000 BC. So we're talking about 60 some hundred years here. And there's also then the Christmas tree. There's a three tiered kind of Christmas tree in here, which denotes the tree of life and resurrection and so forth. There's a lot of auspiciousness. And this was a Taurus full supermoon. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Venus, divine feminine, sacred feminine. Now let's move to Pluto enters Aquarius. So this is the astrological chart for this moment when Pluto enters Aquarius. There is still, it, it's just slightly starting to, to separate, but the star of Venus is still present. The hexagon is still present. But what I noticed right away, and you're going to see, and we're going to come, I'm going to bounce a little bit, but what I noticed right away was the sacred square is present again. It's the big rectangle in the center. I know it's a rectangle, but the unseen calls it, refers to it as the sacred square. And then I noticed that there's also, it, it's like an envelope. Like you see the, the rectangle and then the triangle at the very top that denotes an, like the opening of an envelope. So bear with me here as we, well, I interweave all of this. So I just want to go to 42, the sacred square. And remember, it has to do with Mot and the in ancient Egypt. Mot is the ancient Egyptian goddess of truth, justice, harmony, and balance. Um, it refers, she refers to the ancient Egyptian concepts of truth, balance, order, harmony, law, morality, and justice. The fundamental order of the universe. The Egyptians believed strongly that every individual was responsible for his or her own life and that life should be lived with other people and the earth in mind. In the same way that the gods cared for humanity, so should humans care for each other and the earth which they had been provided with. This philosophy is evident in every aspect of Egyptian culture from the way they constructed their cities to the balance and symmetry of their temples and monuments. When, when one lived harmoniously in the will of the gods, then one was living in harmony with the concept of Mot and the goddess who embodied that concept. One was free to live however one wanted, of course, and completely ignore the principle of Mot. But eventually, one would face the trial which awaited everyone, judgment in the Hall of Truth, also known as the Hall of Two Truths in the afterlife. So we have this divine feminine, the sacred feminine present, the pentagram and the pentagon. We have the sacred square present, Mott, and the 42 questions. Um, and this is from ChemetExperience.com. And so we have all of this playing out. And then, and let me just go to 1221 as well. I'm going to try to weave all of these together in a moment. So 1221, I just want to bring, because 1221 is in the energies, it represents this hourglass, because that is also present in both of these astrological charts, this, the, up, the downside and upside triangles, they're present. Angel number 20, uh, 1221 can represent new beginnings, personal empowerment, and the courage to step out of your comfort zone. It can also be a sign to shed old patterns and beliefs to align with your highest potential. It can be a sign to reevaluate a relationship, whether it's to end one that isn't serving you or to pay attention to your needs in a relationship that's not positive. This can be individually whether it be platonic, romantic relationships, but it's also calling our attention to our relationship to the past, to the patriarchal Piscean era. 
What's our relationship? Is there something that isn't serving us anymore? And are we to release it, do something, reevaluate it? Lastly, 1221 can be a reminder that you are supported and held through the process you are in and that you will always get what you want or something better, something greater. So this 1221 representing the hourglass that is in these two astrological charts, the Taurus full supermoon and Pluto enters Aquarius. Big, massive energies that are playing out. So now as we move forward, so with this, and I'm just going to bring back up the astrological chart. Here it is, that envelope. And I was looking at this in the, the sacred feminine and the number 42. And the first thing that the unseen said, I heard it very loudly and it was very funny. It said, you've got mail. Which, of course, for any of us that's, you know, old enough to remember, it has to do with AOL, America Online. And it was its mail service. AOL was created in 1985. Keep that, that year in mind. And what the unseen said was, you've got mail. Important details, information, news comes to light, comes into the light. And then I heard internet mail, voter fraud, envelopes, you name it contracts. So in this Pluto entering Aquarius, and what's important to remember, when Pluto entered Capricorn, within eight months of that occurring, um, in, back in 2008, the entire recession occurred. Capricorn, its institutions, its, finan its finance, its earth, its tangible. And within eight months, we had the crash, the market crashes, all about the recession, all of that happened. This time, what the unseen is saying to us is, with Pluto and Aquarius, Aquarius is a fixed air sign. So things are going to happen much more rapidly. It's like it's front loaded, it's front end loaded. So where Pluto entering Capricorn took about eight months to begin the revelation of, of these collapse, of the collapse of the institutions and so forth. Pluto and Aquarius, fixed air, <whistles> stealth. So expect within our personal lives and in the public sphere, you've got mail, information, the way we communicate, things coming to light in a very rapid way. And this and they said, Pluto and Aquarius, it's number two, and the unseen said, a flooding of the airwaves, data dumps, system or systems overload. So in other words, the amount of information that we could be flooded with, personally, professionally, globally, what I'm hearing in the moment, it will be quote unquote staggering. It will come in... Um, they're giving me Noah's flood, the, the, the Noah's Ark and the flood and everything. However, in a air way, communica communicative, it's going to be things that are communicated to us, things that have technology that are just going to flood the airwaves and come to us in ways of communication. I'm drilling down on that a lot because it's so important and how this plays to, and let me just complete this, because number three from the unseen was then I heard obsession. And I was like, the word obsession. And I'm like, hmm. And then 40-year cycle. What comes next? Release. There's that word from the main energies. So what comes next? This obsession. And then I, I was like, oh, Calvin Klein. It's, it's, a, it's a scent. And this is from nowsmellthis.com. Calvin Klein launched Obsession in when? 1985. So you've got mail, AOL, 1985. Calvin Klein Obsession, 1985. 2025 is a 40 year cycle. 
Calvin Klein launched Obsession in 1985, and it was the brand's first blockbuster fragrance, far outselling the, the two fragrances that preceded it, Calvin Klein for women and Calvin Klein for men. Both long discontinued. Like many of the fragrances of the period, it was not meant to speak softly. Quote, the name Obsession is big, like a movie poster for this era, said Calvin Klein. I think of everything I've ever done, how obsessed I was. Everyone is obsessed in the 80s. And of course, the name suggests an obsession with someone, a man obsessed by a woman, via Women's Wear Daily, January 18th, 1985. Obsession hit its mark perfectly based on the steamy advertising and magazine scent strips. It reportedly sold out at many stores before they even had the first shipment in stock. It continued to be a big seller well into the 1990s. Why is, we're using this, so the Calvin Klein obsession, but the unseen was saying obsession. It's to realize and recognize our obsession with the 1980s and forward, and certainly the 1980s. Everything was bigger than life in the 1980s. It began this 40-year cycle that we are now completing. It was almost like the height of the height of the Piscean patriarchal era. It was like, quote unquote, the good life. Everything was just amplified and magnified. And as I said, it wasn't meant to speak softly. But now that cycle, this and certainly this 40-year cycle, is complete. What comes next? Release. And it's interesting that, and, and the title of this was Calvin Klein, Calvin Klein Obsession, an appreciation, quote, of sorts. And so in this moment, in this 20-year cycle, in this 40-year completion cycle, expect the unexpected. And recognize how, like with Calvin Klein Obsession, it overtook the two preceding uh, fragrances, Calvin Klein for women, Calvin Klein for men. It overtook them. And that's what's happened in our lives. Our divine masculine and our divine feminine, the beauty of them, the harmony of them, the goodness and greatness of them has been overtaken, overshadowed by obsession, by madness, by craziness by this pursuit to have it all, kill or be killed, have it all. It's not about collaboration and community and unity and everything. It's about, I must have it. I must retain it. It must be mine. However, that cycle of existence is finished, finito, done. And what comes next is our release from it. No longer to return in our lifetimes or beyond. It's done. It's, it's God, the unseen, all of Buddha, the all that is saying, ah, been there, done that. Let's get on with it. It's like I'm bored with myself. Let's get on with it because there's more. There's something greater. There's something more on offer. What is that? It's number four from the unseen. A new digital age. The expansion of consciousness. And they said like analog to digital, binary to quantum. I'm going to go into those definitions and terms next week in next week's show because it'll be a continuation of Pluto moving into Aquarius and so forth the title of which is going to be Crossing the Threshold into a New Tomorrow, Eagle Medicine. A little primer for next week. But to go back to this, what's on offer? What comes after the release? And it's number four. It's foundational. A new digital age. The expansion of consciousness. Like analog to digital, binary to quantum. We've talked about this. Like color to technicolor going back where we began, but an octave higher. And then I heard in quotes, and it was in last week's show, 
ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Original intelligence. So how we, how our consciousness accelerated expansion and how our consciousness expands, not through artificial intelligence or things that are artificial, but through original intelligence, soul source connection, and how that will rapidly change the world we live in, the world we know. So I want to move to um, Astrology by Lauren. And she's talking about a super full moon and Pluto enters Aquarius. And this is a quote by L.R. Nost. Here's to the bridge builders, the hand holders, the light bringers, those extraordinary, extraordinary souls wrapped in ordinary lives who quietly weave threads of humanity into an inhumane world. They are the unsung heroes in a world at war with itself. They are the whispers of hope that peace is possible. Look for them in this present darkness. Light your candle with their flame, and then go. Build bridges, hold hands, bring light to a dark and desperate world. Be the hero you are looking for. Peace is possible. It begins with us. We are rise of the guardians, as above, so below. Legends unite. In our ordinary lives, we have the power to rise, to find what's at our center, to recognize that we are guardians. We are the guardians of our souls. We are the guardians of Mother Earth. We are the guardians of our soul source connection. We are the guardians of everything that comes through us. And it is in this moment, in the face, like Rise of the Guardians, the animated film, in the face of all of this um, overwhelming darkness, nightmares, boogeyman, pitch black, is to stand beaten, battered, bruised, is to stand in the face and speak power to truth, or truth to power, sorry, to speak truth to power. To say, it's not that you don't exist. I know you exist. I'm just not afraid of you. That's what he said. I'm just not afraid of you. And that caused pitch black and the nightmares to collapse, consume themselves, because they held no power any longer. It was done and gone. So imagine when we say that, uniting, unite to ourselves internally first. The shadow aspect. It's not that you don't exist. I'm just not afraid of you. I'm going to harness your, your darkness, your energy, your cloak of opposites to heal myself, to thrive, to rise above. Not to exting, not to allow you to extinguish my light, but to, to cause it to increase and radiate. Astrology by Lauren. This is the last of the four super full moons we have, we have had this year. The first of these on August 19th was square the planet Uranus. The full moon on Friday, November 15th, is conjunct, conjunct the planet of chaos and change. At 24 degrees Taurus, it is only one degree away from culmination. You can just feel the electricity crackling as we approach this moon. These super moons are magnificent and powerful, creators of the king tides, they also have influence over the affairs of the earth as well as humankind. Just a few days after the full moon on November 19th, yesterday, Pluto will enter the sign of Aquarius where it will remain until 2043. Uh, it goes into 2024 because of retrogrades. When it will begin to enter the sign of Pisces. We are in this for the long haul. It's almost a 20 year um, expanse. Uranus is considered by many to be the modern ruler of Aquarius. Saturn is the ancient ruler. So it also seems appropriate for this Uranian full moon to escort Pluto into this next era of our lives. So this Taurus full supermoon conjunct Uranus, conjunct Algol, 
and Algol in, in, in modern times representing the sacred feminine, escorting, accompanying Pluto into this next era of our lives. With Uranus in the spotlight holding court for the full moon, it could feel as if we are standing on the threshold of something both awful and awe-inspiring all at the same time. As an agent of chaos and change, we are all going to have to be flexible over the next few days. She's talking about the full moon energies. Riding the wild tailwinds of this super moon. For once we step over that threshold, remember next week's show is crossing the threshold into a new tomorrow, eagle medicine. It could feel very much like there is no turning back and things will never quite be the same again. Not all changes are welcome, but in many ways, we were, we were and are being asked to ride this wave of change. First off, with the great conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn that occurred at zero degrees of Aquarius in 2020, and now with the ingress of Pluto into Aquarius this week. It could feel unsettling, and all the more so right now. And we can see, pardon me, and we can and will see a few more twists and turns before all is said and done. Full moons are times of culmination. They can bring things to a conclusion or bring revelations out into the open. Uranus weather is unpredictable, surprising, and often riddled with all sorts of extraordinary outcomes. You've got mail. Important details, information, news comes into light, comes to the light. Internet, mail. Voter fraud. I'm using that. I'm giving it to you the way the unseen gave it to me. Internet, mail, voter fraud, envelopes, you name it. And it can bring this out. And I want to bring in just quickly at the same time, we're interweaving all of this. So again, bear with me. Our key word. Our key word is emergence. The process of coming into view or becoming exposed after being concealed. The process of coming into being or of becoming important or prominent. The fact of something becoming known or starting to exist. The distinct patterns and behaviors that can arise out of complex systems. Emergence. So we're talking about emergence, and Astrology by Lauren is talking about. Uranus playing this major role with the uh, the Taurus full supermoon that just occurred, all the way back to the Saturn Jupiter conjunction. This aspect. She goes on to say the full moon in August was exactly conjunct the U.S. moon, and was the day of the Democratic National Convention when Kamala Harris was officially nominated as the Democratic candidate. Going back to that show, this is when rise a cosmic reset, the unseen speaks, tipping the scales of democracy, liberty, freedom forward. And legends unite, rise of the guardians, Sandman, the oldest guardian, the deliverer of dreams, the guardian of dreams. And you see how in the movie, Pitch Black kills Sandman. But through hope and faith and the light and facing the darkness, in the animated movie, Sandman is resurrected. So the dreams are resurrected. The lights do not extinguish. They multiply and rapidly come back online. Pluto and Aquarius. This full moon follows the election in which Trump appears to have won handily. But note that there could still be a few twists and turns to this story over the months ahead. In our own personal lives, we should, be, we should also be prepared for some surprising twists of our own. Plans can change. Circumstances change. We learn something that has this capacity to change our whole perspective. And it would not be surprising if many find themselves at a juncture in their lives in which they find themselves adjusting to sudden changes in their lives. 
These could be changes that already occurred, are occurring, or that you are planning to make. The retrograde phase of Uranus is when, and uh, Uranus is retrograde right now, is when we are asked to make those internal adjustments that allow us to adapt to what change may come. Change, change, change. It's all about change, and it's all about how we embrace change, and it's all about how we as guardians rise to the occasion. We rise to the moment. It is not to recoil. It is not to succumb. It is not to give up. It is not the shadow definition of surrender. It is the light version, the soul version of surrender, which is surrender to your soul source connection. Pierce the illusion. Pierce the veil. And connect to your center. Recognize what it is, what it offers, who you truly are, and then to walk the talk in that lane, in that vein. Because that's as Mott, ancient Egypt. Exactly. And Alicia's saying we choose to be here at this time. Exactly. Eight billion souls chose to be here, chose to play their divine roles. And as the sacred square, 42, and Mott, we are meant to be in harmony with one another, in harmony with Mother Earth, and to live our lives in with grace and goodness so that, and I just want to bring this in because it's from John 13, 34, 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This verse, this biblical verse, is reaffirming what predates it with Mott and the ancient Egyptians and the sacred square and 42. It is saying, love thy neighbor. It is saying to love Mother Earth. It is to recognize that we are the custodians of our lives, of one another, of Mother Earth, of our experience. And should we choose to do otherwise, you meet Mott and the ostrich feather, a white feather, she places the feather on a scale of justice and she weighs your heart against the weight of the feather. It doesn't mean that we have to be perfect. It means that is the purity of our intentions, is the purity of our lives such that it is not um, heavier than the weight of the feather. If we are not doing that, we're standing in the light, we are literally... Um, Amplifying, magnifying truth, light, kindness, goodness, justice in a way that respects each of us and it respects Mother Earth. Anything less than that, it goes to number eight <laughs> and it's coming in. So, and I wanted to play this. I'm going to put it in the show comments on my, the Dear James Facebook page afterwards. Number eight from The Unseen is 40 year cycle of completion introduction to the new age, the age of Aquarius. And in the chart, I'm going to come back to astrology by Lauren. In the chart, I'm just bringing up the astrological chart again. You see at the bottom, so we have the envelope, the sacred, the rectangle, the, the top flap looks like an envelope. At the base, the bottom, is this flap that's separating. It instantly said to me, ah, trap door, the bottom falls out taking out the trash. Now, there was a candidate in this most recent election in the U.S. that literally used that phrase, we're taking out the trash, and they referred to the trash as Kamala Harris. Well, here in this chart, this 40-year cycle of completion, introduction to the new age, the age of Aquarius, trap door, the bottom falls out, taking out the trash. And what I saw 
and this is why I, I wish I, you know, don't want to buy, violate copyrights. Um, it's from, it's Veruca in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And she wants the goose that laid the golden egg. And she wants it and she wants it now. This obsession, this I must have it, this larger than life. And as she's doing this singing thing and she's really quite a mess, she jumps up onto the scale where they would weigh the golden eggs. And it goes, ah, ah, and it says bad egg. And she falls down the chute. And the father says, where is she going? And he, and uh, Willy Wonka says, to the garbage, to the chute. And when he runs, her father, Veruca's father runs up, I'm coming, I'm coming to save you. He dives head first down the, to the to the chute. The bottom falls out, and again it goes ah, ah, bad egg. So there's this aspect <laughs> that again Pluto in Aquarius. You've got mail, important details, information, news. This rise of the guardians, that Mott, the sacred feminine, the sacred uh, square number forty two this weighing the heart against the feather and this expansion, this accelerated expansion, this newness that through this, through this astrology, as above, so below, there's a trap door, there's a bottom that's falling out and quote unquote, the trash is being taken out. The bad is being removed. The nightmares are pulled to the underworld. And thus what remains is goodness, kindness. And again, it's up to us to choose. Each individual, we have free will, each of us. We get to choose. Are we a good egg or a bad egg? And thereby, are we following this new commandment to love thy neighbor as thyself? And thy God above all other. I mean, it's do unto others as you would have done to you. These are timeless. They have been here for 2,000 plus years. I mean, and beyond, because of course, Mott and the sacred square, it all predates Christianity, Judaism. So this isn't like it's something quote unquote new. This is ancient wisdom that is being brought to the fore, and it's being brought to bear. Let me go back to astrology by Lauren. So now it's Pluto enters Aquarius on November 19th. This was just yesterday, where it will remain for the next 20 years. Pluto tends to bring out the very best and the very worst of the signs as it dives deep down into the foundations of what that sign represents for us. And as it emerges from the last time uh, as it emerges for the last time from the world of Capricorn, it looks forward to the vast possibilities of Aquarius while bringing us along for the ride. Whereas in Capricorn, all the power, Pluto, was being concentrated at the top, in Aquarius, the power is from the bottom up. We the people. And whereas in Capricorn we cling to the laws, the hard and fast infrastructures, traditions, and the past, in Aquarius, we look to the future, understand that sometimes we need to change and evolve our structures to accommodate an evolving society. So Aquarius is forward thinking, forward living, forward being. It is not something of ancient institutions or rooted institutions. Astrology by Lauren, she continues, but we also realize that we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater left over from the Pluto in Capricorn era. There are infrastructures that do need to be reorganized and rebuilt on better standards. There are things that need to be updated, but you don't want to get rid of the ones that work. There are laws that can be oppressive and discriminating, but you don't want to, but you don't want to want to get rid of the laws that keep us free from harm and support our freedoms. So there's this point of like, we've said that so many times in, in Weekly Wisdom and Insights. We don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We, we want to come to this place of purity, 
of the Piscean patriarchal era. We want to retain the very best of it while we allow the shadow, the, the guck and the goo of it to be uh, purified, released. We empty our vessels. So again, remember, individually, micro, to the whole of the whole, macro. And it is an individual, eight billion souls, person, choice. Now, of course, I say that, free will. But the ultimate host, the master weaver, is the unseen, the all that is. So, as above, so below, to, a, to an extent, to a degree. But there is an overarching, overriding um, tapestry. So it's not as though artificial intelligence gets to overrule original intelligence. It's not that ego mind personality gets to make the final decision over soul source connection. It is exactly the inverse of that. Lauren goes on, you know there are deep wounds to heal when Pluto in Aquarius is expressed as selfishness and indifference, when it seems too difficult to change your own behaviors to benefit the larger whole, when rather than uniting with others in common cause, the power of the people devolves into tribalism, scapegoating, zealotry, a vapid mob mentality, and populist fascist regimes. These are the Pluto in Aquarius red flags. It's the shadow aspect of it. You know you are on the right track when Pluto in Aquarius, in Pluto in Aquarius, when you hear words like liberty, equality, freedom, and brother, sisterhood, when your tent is big enough to hold everyone without exception and recognize the strength that comes from shared ideals put into application. This is about everyone has a place at the table. Back in the day, we would have called it, in the 80s, we would have called it the United Colors of Benetton. It's that in our diversity, we recognize the peacock, we're coming to that, in, in all the colors under the rainbow, we recognize our strength, our unity, our divinity. Lauren concludes, um, and technological advances in service to the greater good of humanity. You know you are on the right track when you recognize the meaning of the words from Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, quote, that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth, and if anything, will only be improved. We are being shown, again, the, the shadow aspect of the, of the Capricorn and the uh, patriarchal, so Pluto and Capricorn, patriarchal, the 80s, the obsessions, all of this, we're being shown that, which is the shadow aspect. Because in the ending is the beginning, in the beginning is the ending. So in this transfer from Capricorn to Aquarius, from Piscean patriarchal to Aquarian matriarchal, we're being shown both the worst of the worst, and the most, the high of the highs, the, the, of what's possible in these moments. And it's with that, it's number five from the unseen. And they said, how we think, speak, and communicate advances, accelerates. And they said, hang on for the ride. And remember, we've got Uranus playing here. I mean, Uranus is prominent in the show. Hang on for the ride means, quote, to brace yourself and stay involved in a situation that is likely to be exciting, unpredictable, or even chaotic. Essentially saying, hold on tight because things are about to get interesting. That's an understatement. It also implies, it suggests that the upcoming experience will be thrilling and potentially a bit wild. While hang on implies actively staying involved, the phrase can also indicate that you might not have full control over what happens, but you are choosing to go along with it, meaning we're going along with the ride. We're the guest, not the host. We are a co-creator, not the creator. 
Lastly, you could use this phrase when talking about a roller coaster ride, a new business, a new a business venture, a relationship with ups and downs, or any situation where you are ready to embrace the unknown. We have been talking about the unknown and embracing the unknown for so long in Weekly Wisdom and Insights because it is unknown to us. We've spent all of this time climbing the mountain. We're at the peak of that transition. And there's, there's a reconciling. There's fear involved because it's like, well, I've spent all my life, you know, head down or head up, climbing this mountain. The ideal becomes the new reality. We've been climbing and searching for the ideal. And we're at the peak of the mountain. We're at this transition, this massive transformation, a new digital age, the expansion of consciousness. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. And so how we think, speak, and communicate advances, accelerates. You've got mail. All of these energies are playing out. They're, it's like a, a convergence of them. And they're showing me like just crashing waves and, you know, maybe like the, in a, a washing machine where it's just the agitation, where it's really like churning up the waters and it's churning us. Our energies, our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings, all of it's being churned. But remember, that was back on the August 21st show. The wheels of time are, and they had churning, and they crossed it out, and they said turning with three exclamation points. So the wheels of time are turning, and they turn forward. We advance, we excel, we accelerate, we ascend, we transcend, we transmute, we take the garbage out, meaning the darkness, the shadow, the goo, the ick, the obsession, so that we come back into harmony and balance. Um, I want to bring in peacock medicine. And this is from sunsigns.org. Peacocks are the noblest of the avians. They also have a very regal nature. Thus, they symbolize some of the most highly admired qualities for humans. Some of these qualities include royalty, glory, keen vision, precision, immortality, and incorrigibility. The peacock spirit animal represents purity and integrity. Moreover, they are beautiful and have multi multiple color aspects of the peacock's physical appearance. In other words, this multiplicity of color is what's so extraordinary about them. And we were just saying that it's, it's our diversity. It's the multiple shades and aspects and hues and qualities of our beingness, of our divinity, that comprises not only our physical appearance, but our innate light and beauty. These beautiful colors are symbolic of the unique beauty that we each possess. Peacock spirit guides Peacock spirit guides speak to us of vitality and living, up and living vibrantly, abundantly. Therefore, we should recognize our beauty and should allow ourselves to shine and live with integrity. Now more than ever, remember your beauty. Shine your light. Connect to your soul source connection. We are far more than we realize or that we give ourselves credit for. And it's easy to go down the uh, uh, shoot, the garbage shoot, and be a bad egg. It's just easy. It takes more, it requires more of us to remember all that we have been taught, all that history and ancient wisdom has offered us. They've shown us the way. Are we listening? Are we going as guided? Um, peacock Medicine from sunsigns.org. We are the only ones who can make ourselves shine. So self-esteem and self-confidence are crucial to living in a manner true to yourself. 
Peacock medicine inspires a rejuvenation of the spirit. If you are feeling down, know that you can call upon the peacock animal totem to help you spruce up your life. Native Americans believe in the power of the peacock. They believe that you can that they make the person that you become. Let me say that again. They believe that you make the person that you become. It's a beautiful quote that says, your character is your fate. What's at your center? You make the person that you become. In Native American symbolism, the peacock animal totem signifies power, poise, wellness, and splendor. Medicines made from peacocks are deemed powerful and worthy. Shamans use peacock medicines to awaken clairvoyant abilities, soul source connection abilities. Peacock feathers play a major role in ritual healings and ceremonies. Seeing a peacock means that one will find joy, happiness, and abundance in their life. Peacock medicine reminds you to be humble in your interactions with others. Treat people with compassion and kindness, and always find a way of taking care of your general well-being. There's a direct connection here with peacock medicine to the scripture, to Mott, to the sacred square, 42, weighing the feather against the heart. It's all here. The peacock animal spirit carries with it the omens of nobility, wellness, protection, watchfulness, holiness, pride, and kindness. Native American chiefs wore peacock feathers to signify their communication with the spirit world. Peacock feathers also symbolize the power of the thunder gods who have power over the wind and air. Aquarius, fixed air. It's a fixed air sign. It means it's foundational. In Christianity, the peacock signifies eternal life and resurrection as depicted by the life of Christ. The peacock sheds its feathers every year, and they grow back in the glory and grandeur they possess. This regal bird becomes its majestic self once again as it regains its feathers. It's the phoenix. It's the phoenix rising. It's the same, the molting, the going through the, the fire to be reborn, renewed. This symbol aligns with the belief that we will die and be resurrected and then be fitted with new bodies that make us one with God. A new digital age, the expansion of consciousness, ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. From analog to digital, binary to quantum, accelerated expansion. The peacock is a great sign of God's glory and mercy in our lives. The peacock symbol can also be a sign of vanity of which one must guard against. See, it can, it can also be that obsession, the 80s, this past 40-year cycle, that we must guard against vanity. And finally, the peacock animal totem has been in use by many for millennia. In ancient Greek and Roman mythology, it bears an association with Hera and Juno. These were the wives of the most powerful of gods. Additionally, so divine feminine, additionally, the spots on the peacock's tail feathers represent the eyes of the heart and symbolizes the vault of heaven. The Hindu faith categorizes the peacock's symbolic meaning with the deity Lakshmi and a deep, genuine concern for humanity. Other Asian belief systems pair the peacock with Kuan Yin, whereby she gives aid to the people during their spiritual evolution. In ancient Babylonia and Persia, Peacock was given recognition and praise as a great guardian and protector. Peacock medicine, rise of the guardians, the age of Aquarius. All of this is so masterfully interwoven by the unseen, by spirit, source, and symphony, the all that is. And they present it for us each and every time. Number six, and this, this goes with number five, how we think, speak, and communicate advances, accelerates, hang on for the ride. Number six from the unseen is, um, I heard Midas touch, Mazda rotary engine. And I want to bring up this image. This is what they were showing me, and we have spoken about this before in past shows. Where in the moment our ego mind personality is one piston. So like, imagine a, a cylinder, a piston engine. They're cylinders. They are independent, and they go up and down. So the ego mind personality is one piston, the heart is another piston, and the soul source connection is another piston. All three are operating independent of one another. 
age of Aquarius, Pluto and Aquarius, how we think, speak, and communicate advances, accelerates. It's about the Mazda engine. And they gave me Ahura Mazda. Ahura Mazda is the Lord of Wisdom. It is the creator deity and the god of the sky in the Iranian religion, Zoroastrianism. So, and recognize in ancient Babylonia and Persia, Peacock was given rec recognition and praise as a great guardian and protector. So here we have Ahura Mazda, the rotary engine. What this is saying in the image that you're seeing is a rotary engine is a triangle where at the top, soul source connection, SSC, soul source connection. Bottom right, uh, ego, mind, personality, EMP. Bottom left, HRT, heart. It's where the soul source connection, the ego, mind, personality, and the heart are unified. They move in a triangular, circular fashion. They are one with one another. They are not disconnected from one another. So instead of them being independent cylinders, pistons, operating where one can override the other, or they're disconnected from one another, in this new era, a new digital age, this expansion of consciousness, they become unified. They become, it's to where you wouldn't, you can't, it's impossible that your heart can override, your mind can override your soul or vice versa. They come into unity to where you just, it's, it's knowing, it's intuition. It's like the height of knowing. Your mind knows your heart, knows your soul, and they're all operating in unity and harmony with one another. This, and this Midas touch, this touch of gold, pure gold. Gold is sacred. Gold is, again, from the gods, from the unseen, from the other side. There's a shadow aspect to the Midas touch story. You know, this Midas, the King Midas. And he was given a wish, granted a wish. And initially he asked that everything he touched turns to gold. Only to realize the shadow aspect of that wish, that request, is a tale of greed. Slaves to our own desires. And he begged for that wish, that granted wish to be undone, because everything, his food, his daughter, everything he touched, the roses, turned to gold. And what he realized and came face to face with was the shadow aspect of his greed. And they guided him to go to the living waters, water, Aquarius is a water, it's an air sign, but it represents the cupbearer. It represents the living waters. And they had him, Midas, King Midas, go to the river and bathe himself. And it is said that flakes of gold were coming off of him everywhere as he released that greed, that aspect, that shadow aspect. So let me go into two of our quotes. And this is from Carihone at CafeOSoul.com. The truth cannot be silenced. It cannot be. The truth speaks for itself. And in this, you've got mail, important details, information, and a Pluto and Aquarius, a flooding of the airwaves, data dumps, systems overload, all of this coming into the light. The sun was, for that full moon, the Taurus full supermoon, the sun was in Scorpio, and Scorpio represents truth. It's one of the aspects, bringing things to light. The truth cannot be silenced. Our other quote, fresh activity is the only means of overcoming adversity. So where we have been in this state of obsession, this kind of like the glory days and, you know, wanting to go back to something and thinking that it's the only thing and we have fear of the unknown and what's coming. Fresh activity is the only means of overcoming adversity. It's new growth. It's something new. It is not some old and tired and used up past. It's not the remnants of that. 
And so, <clears throat> pardon me, as we, this season four of Weekly Wisdom and Insights, and this Pluto and Aquarius age and era is, is epic. It is going to be epic. It is going to be filled with change, prosperity, abundance, nourishment from the ground up, not from the top down. That was the old system. This is from the bottom up, Aquarius, we the people, and how we each individually have a choice to rise or fall, to act in alignment with our soul source connection and all of the ancient wisdom we have been given through multiple millennia and cultures and peoples from the unseen. It has been ever present. We are at the peak. It is up to each of us, it is up to you to decide as you stand on the peak. Do you transcend the unknown, what's before you, what's on the other side, the glory and the possibility of what's to be and what's to come? Or do you roll back down the hill? Do you fall back down the hill? Do you go down? Do you fall through the trap door? Do you get the bottom falls out? Do you do you roll into the the trash bin? Eh, eh, bad egg. And you know, in the moment, it, it doesn't matter whether you believe, because this is ego mind personality, what you're thinking. You can think all day long that what you're thinking, your position, is correct and right and true. However, you're thinking it. What each of us must do is come down into our heart center, our soul source connection, our center, and ask, what's really true? And once you know that, That will determine your character is your fate, your center. That will determine everything because that's a knowing. That comes from a higher source, original intelligence. And you're either in alignment with it or you're in defiance of it. So that's where we are. Epic. I mean, this show could go on for three hours. We will pick this all back up in next week's show in a way because. And we're going to add on to these themes because it's so big. This Pluto and Aquarius and everything that may, will occur between now and um, end of first quarter next year, 2025, this 40-year cycle of completion and introduction to the new age and the age of Aquarius, it, it requires, a, a, it, there's a lot here to unpack and to process and to share. So until next week, um, if you're not already doing it, please consider upgrading your operating system, your internal operating system. Choose to, um, as it's so eloquently, I just want to close with it again. As this biblical scripture, John 13, 34, 35, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. It's self-evident. What's at your center, what's at your heart will speak. It will speak for itself. If you're not already doing that, please consider upgrading your operating system because it will change your life forever. So thank you all. I love you all for being on this journey. I'm so excited to embark on year four of Weekly Wisdom and Insights. And until next week, be well, be kind, and we will see, love one another, love yourself and love one another, 
and we will see you next week. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting dearjames.com.